is actually a Kabbalistic meditation, a prayer, which is a visualization, to imagine yourself praying in the presence of righteous people and tzaddikim. Um, so, you know, it's maybe hard for people to imagine this, but if, if they can pray with the people that they love most, they're most secure with. And that really opens you up to prayer because you're now very protected, very full, very complete, and very wholesome. You're very, you feel very good in this presence. And that's a good visualization to actually get yourself into the prayer. So maybe you're sitting in, in a praying alone or praying within a community and you don't feel comfortable next to the person next to you, the other person's making noise, or there's other noise, distracting noise. Just imagine yourself like just sitting with the best company possible and you're just sitting there. And all you want to do is to say, you know, father or mother, that's it. And that's like a very simple practice of, of prayer, just to understand that. Now, of course, it gets much more complicated than that, and you can have, you know, complicated, in-depth meditation of prayer. In, in the Talmud, when it speaks about a, a group of sages, which are called Hasidim Arushan, or the early mystics, the early, the early pious ones, it says they would wait an hour before they prayed. Sho'im Sha'achas, they would wait an hour. And what is this idea of waiting? There's, a, there's an interesting debate between some Talmudic scholars, Maimonides and others. What does this mean? Does it mean that they would settle their minds and empty their minds of all thoughts? Or would they s empty their minds of all thoughts of what they had before and enter their mind with new thoughts, with a new consciousness? So Maimonides is of the opinion that they would just settle their minds. Just settle their minds and really clear your mind. And there's many techniques, Kabbalistic techniques, also to quiet your mind. The most simple technique would be to actually observe the mind, um, which is called habata. Habata means to observe yourself. So close your eyes and just watch your thoughts rising. And when you watch your thoughts rising, you actually, instead of allowing them to overflow your mind, you're just watching them coming up and going down, you actually settle your mind and mind becomes slower. So that's the observation without a judgment and without, certainly without a resistance, just to watch the thought without pushing it aside and fighting the thought, just allowing the thought to rise, just allowing it to settle and having a focal point maybe, which you keep bringing back your attention, so it could be in your breathing or a focal, a very simple focal point, and that just allows your mind to settle down. So you can practice this for an hour to settle your mind, then you're, you can properly engage in prayer. Or you can choose to, instead of settling your mind that way, to actually introduce other thoughts. So introduce a whole complex system of new thoughts. So instead of thinking about the everyday life, Think about like the capitalistic chariot or the interconnection between universes. And prayer is divided, the Jewish prayer is divided in the morning into four sections, which parallel the four universes. So you're going from a functional place to an emotional place to an intellectual place to a transcendent place. And these are four parallel universes. And if you can actually understand the system, how it works within you, that you're very much present in your body, then you're very much present in your emotion, then you're very much present in your mind, then you're very much present in your transcendence. You actually follow the path of prayer itself, and you're actually transcending with your entire self. You're not leaving your body in one place or your emotions in one place. You're engaging the body in oneself. You're being acknowledging that the body is a vessel, a holy vessel, and you're blessing. You're blessing, saying that this is a vessel. Then you're moving to a higher place where your emotions. So you're getting emotions engaged in your mind, and then you come to this point of transcendence. And incidentally, or interestingly enough, the point, the peak of the experience, is when you start praying for others, where there's a complete transcendence of self, and you're no longer saying that I have done something, but we have done something, and you're asking forgiveness. But this is like the ultimate level of, of transcendence, which is the beyond, beyond self. Beyond self, which includes self. So there is a you, and you're praying, but you're praying for the collective. So this is another, this is more detailed level of prayer, which is more focused and, and more engaged.